So you're a pizza person, but you're married to a wing person, and your kids are salad people? You can't pick your fam, but with over 50 menu items to choose from, you can make them all happy. Order today and enjoy Boston pizza at home. on the Nintendo Switch. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Welcome wish. to Curling Alberta coverage of the 2023 Boston Pizza Cup. Live stream coverage provided by Curling Stadium. Here we are at the River Creek Casino here in Enoch, Alberta. We're headed into draw number two with four games on the ice. And you can catch any game you want on the Curling Alberta or Curling Zone YouTube pages. I have Jeff Hoffert here in the booth alongside myself, Jason Ginter. And we are happy to bring to you the matchup between Team Botcher and Team Clybrink today. Happy to be here again with you, Jay. Last time we were together, we saw a thrilling final in the women's. Today we have Team Clybrink, which consists of the skip, Kyler Clybrink. Third, Chris Kennedy. The second is Evan Van Amsterdam. And lead is Tyler Van Amsterdam. They're facing off against Team Botcher, skipped by Brendan Botcher. Third is Mark Kennedy. The second is Brett Gallant. And the lead's Ben, he ben Hebert. Yeah, just a, a pretty great uh, draw two matchup. We had uh, Kyler Kleibrink here this morning, faced off and uh, made quick work of Team Tau without Johnson Tau, their skip this morning with a nine to one victory. They've obviously had some experience with the ice conditions here in Enoch and Team Botcher getting a bye directly to the quarterfinals uh, by route of their performance on tour this season. They've obviously come off of a great performance at the last Grand Slam. I think they went through that one undefeated. Should yeah, be a great matchup. Yeah, Team Botcher found their stride. They were they were hot in Camrose. They they were undefeated. They played really well. They, they've worked on a lot this year, and it seems to be paying off. As you mentioned to me before we got on the air, though, Jay, these two teams have played a couple of really good games so far. So it's not like Team Clybrink's afraid of Team Botcher. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I think I was in a couple of events with both teams when they competed against each other, and it seemed like each game was super tight. Uh, I think when Kyler had a different lineup in Okotoks, they played them very tight on one of the stream games, and uh, Team Botcher came out ahead. And in their second matchup with uh, another lineup change with Team Clybrink, Team Clybrink actually came out ahead. So this year, I think they're one and one on the season. It's good. Five, six. Roof. Four five. Four five. Line's good. So yeah, this one might just come down to who has the last rock in the first end, and obviously, as you can see by our graphic down at the the bottom of our screen, Team Botcher was closer to the button in the last stone draw. I think by about two or three centimeters, it was quite close. So Team Clybrink will start without the hammer. So Jeff, yep. what would you say yep. would be the keys yep. to the game for both of these teams? Well, you mentioned it already that Team Clybrink's been able to play a game on this surface so far, so they need to use that to their advantage. They, they know yep. maybe what they're going to see from the ice. So early on in the game, it wouldn't be a bad idea for them to, to go at Team Botcher. Obviously, they're not doing that in this first end, but early on, it might not be bad to use their advantage from earlier on. And for Team Botcher, I think it's just be confident. Everybody on this sheet is just 
flowing with experience. So just use that and, and play their game. Don't don't try to get sucked into anything that, that Team Black, Clybrink may want them to do. Sometimes the knifing just like... Yeah, and, and like I'd mentioned in the in the outset of this this draw number two, Team Clybrink has had a couple of different lineups throughout the season. And they have finally settled in with lead Tyler Van Amsterdam. I know you know they've had variants in, in different bond spiels, but uh, they did qualify with Tyler playing lead when they competed through Okotoks um, in their provincial qualifier in December. So I've had a lot of success with Tyler and I had the privilege of having Tyler spare for, for our team in an event also in Okotoks this year. He's a fantastic team guy and uh, he throws a pretty good lead rock. As we go through the format here at the Boston Pizza Cup, uh, this year is similar to many years in the past. In the men's division, we have 12 teams here in Enoch. This will be a triple knockout competition through, I guess, qualification play. One team will qualify through A, one through B, and two through C, and they will qualify into a four-team page playoff, which starts on Saturday night, the 1-2 game, or the A-B game, and uh, a semifinal, and then the, the grand finale on Sunday. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good format where you get three three chances to make the playoffs. You get your three losses, and then, then it goes into that page playoff where if you go undefeated, you still get that second chance. Yes, yeah, so we had a, a players' consultation meeting yesterday with all the teams, and uh, it was a very widely accepted format that all the teams liked, and uh, you know they've liked over the years. And as good. as we've seen throughout Six, the national competition at the Briar in seven. the past, Alberta has done very well. So seven, we've sent a great rep oh. every year, and I'm sure we will again this year. This one's sliding better. Well, and I, I think, Jay, if you look through the field here, it's deep. 13, and, and it's always deep in Alberta. So it's it's going to be some pretty exciting curling all week long. Okay. And if you tuned in earlier today uh, with Ted Appleman and I on the, on the call, we discussed just how young the field is and how it has been, you know, similar to the women's field this year when we had the Scotties, the Alberta Scotties in Wetaskiwin. They're, the average age here has to be close to 25 to 30, I would say, and uh, it's it's just it's fantastic to see the the young players coming up and competing with some of these other you know bigger names and having a chance to to showcase their stuff on the in the big show here in Enoch at the River Cree, playing on the arena ice, getting some experience, so that you know if one of them eventually gets to the national level, they know what to expect. Well, Jay, would you say you sort of made your bones in this event before now you're you're headed to the Briar as the as the British Columbia rep? Well, what I learned uh, playing in this event, I think I played in it five or six seasons in a row, having some success but never been able to crack it. I just needed to get out of Alberta. Whoa. This field is so strong. It was nice Tyler. to develop my skills here and then you know find Hi, a different Tyler. route to the Briar. So I joined up with a few Hi, players Tyler. in BC and Please. happy to Please. join. I think will likely be a minimum of two teams from this field, potentially three Ten at the Briar. B but I think the the point is the development, like the, the the experience that you can get playing against top teams on arena ice that you, you wouldn't normally get unless you made it into a Grand Slam event or to a national championship. So I, and as deep as Alberta is, even in junior and U18, it's difficult to make national championship events. Yes, definitely. I uh, I can't understate how much this event would, would help my development, being able to play out on this this conditions against teams that are at the caliber of Briar and national Olympic champions out here. You know, you learn from the best by just being out here. Even if you're not on the same sheet, you can learn kind of through osmosis. You see what those other big-name teams are doing, and you can take it back to your own team. As we see Chris Kennedy coming out of the hack here. You would have seen Chris in, uh, I think, t one or two other Boston Pizza Cup finals alongside Karsten Sturme. Uh, although he had a change up over the last season, he has had a lot of experience and a lot of success here at the Boston Pizza Cup. 
at the ripe age of what 25 years old yeah I, or he might be older than that jay we're getting old so oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> back when i curled with him he was the young kid so i'm sure he can't be older than that yeah you see lots of uh flavor lots of university of alberta flavor out here uh, last draw we had two teams in action we have various members of past University of Alberta teams throughout the the teams here at the event so they're sprinkled good. across all the sheets <laughs> yes yeah obviously some some people take different routes but a lot of people take or took the same route through the University of Alberta here we have Evan Van Amsterdam on the sweep here him and his brother Tyler both competed through the Concordia University in the college national championships both won a national championship title. Playing back end, mind you. Now they have to take their turn sweeping rocks. <laughs> so nice, simple end here. Both teams, I guess, are interested in getting their footing before they get into it. Yeah, for me, I think this helps Brendan Botcher's team a little bit more than it would help Team Clybrink. Like you had mentioned... Clybrink has already had a game on the on this or in this facility, being able to throw the rocks, get the feel of the ice. I would have liked to see them go after a little bit this first end. But but in the same breath too, I, like I think they know who they're playing and, and they don't want to lose the game in the first few ends. And they they might just want to get their feeding on feet under them as well and and try to make sure that they're not making any mistakes early. Fair to say both teams will be happy with this start. Yeah, I think so. And a successful blank attempt there from Brendan Botcher. He takes the hammer into the second and still scoreless. As we come back to, to the 2023 Boston Pizza Cup here in Enoch, Alberta, uh, Team Botcher was able to successfully blank the first end, taking the hammer into the second. I'm going to go through some of the other action we, we have here in Enoch at River Cree Casino. On sheet A, we have Team Conchu versus Team Sturme. Team Conchu who has the hammer in the first end. On sheet C, we have Team Baverick versus Team Kui with Team Baverick ha having hammer in the first end. And on sheet D, we have Team Jakes versus Team Slachinski, with Team Jakes carrying the hammer in the first end. All three games haven't finished the first end yet, and we will keep you posted on those games. However, if you wanted to watch those games specifically, you should be able to find links to all games across all four sheets on Curling Alberta and Curling Stadium YouTube pages. 
So a little more of an offensive start here from Team Botcher throwing up the corner guard. I, I think that was influenced by where that first rock from Team Clybrink ended up. It, it's probably not good enough to guard or not in the best spot, so Brendan saw that as an opportunity to throw up that corner and try to generate some offense. Yeah, especially in, in the games this season, it's really important for those rocks to, if they're going to be placed somewhere in the house, you want them to be touching the center line as close to the forefoot as possible. Or if they're in the guard zone, they want to be touching the center line with the addition of the no-tick zone this year. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think Kyler made the right move there by throwing that center guard and, and not trying to guard that stone that's, that's up there in the eight foot off to the side. He can use that center guard later in the end much easier. And just a perfectly executed shot there by Ben Hebert. As Kyler calls for the freeze, it appears that this end is going to shape up entirely different than the first. We got some rocks in play, folks. Here's Evan Van Amsterdam. Skipped at this competition last season. This is Evan's first year on the front end in a, in a long time. Have you had any conversation with him, Jay, about how that's going? He said he really enjoys the lack of pressure with the front end, being able to just focus on one job, you know, just making sure everyone else's shots are, are being executed well and helping out more. He said he felt a little bit lonely in the skip position at times, and now he's able to feel like he's more, more, of, a team, more of a team member, being able to have more input there. It's good to hear. He was an exceptional skip at the junior level and made the transition into men's and, and had some success. So it's just neat to see that no matter what you do in the junior level, you can end up in a different position later. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think I made the transition as I left juniors into playing a more front end role. And uh, I think whatever you can do, if you if you find yourself in a different position, just try to play that role to the best of your ability and if you do that, you're going to make the rest of your team much better. Where is it? Got to go, guys. Tight guard. A bit of a misstep there by Brett Gallant. I think they wanted that one on the corner of that top yellow, so just maybe got a little tight or overcurled in a different spot. So that, that could be the product of not playing a game on this surface quite yet. Yes, if anything, the they'll understand how the hits will run, but it's how, how are the draws going to run differently than maybe they had in their pre-event practice on Tuesday. Not a bad result, though. Still guarding their stone in the 8-foot. Tyler Van Amsterdam and Chris Kennedy trying to get this rock into the forefoot. And it appears they... It's close. It's fully buried behind the rock in the forefoot, but we may not know who's shot rock until we get an overhead. Yeah. Three, three quarters? So I think that may have been a bit of an audible. I, I think they called the freeze there, and then they audible to the come around halfway through when they yeah. had the line for it. It's going to work out because now Team Botcher is almost forced to send this one into the house and simplify things for them. Oh, great result there from Brett Gallant. Makes the hit, makes the run back, and actually rolls behind the center guard. Yeah, re really good results. Really, really good throw, and they managed it down the sheet really well. And optimal execution. So obviously, this team botcher when they came together through the off season, 
a lot of people thought, wow, if you could find four guys to play together in Alberta, who would you choose? And they chose chose the four people that might be the best at each position. Yeah, um, they, we always sort of talk about all-star teams in curling, and it's hard to find a lineup like this anywhere. That that's more of an all-star team. Yeah, they. However, they did have their fair share of struggles early. Um, well, you know, what do you think would have caused that? I think it speaks to sticking to the process as a new team. They had some work to do to, to line up how they threw the rock and how their rocks run down the sheet, and they really committed to it. And and obviously, right out of the gate, you're not just going to blow everyone out of the water. They, they won an event early, but then they were just really committed to sticking to the process. And, and then I think everyone saw how dominant they were in Camro is that what they're doing with, with their amazing coach, Paul Webster, is, is paying off, and you... you you really see that work they put in that leads to this kind of success. Yeah, I think that's a good message for all teams. You know, if, if something doesn't seem to be working, it doesn't mean that the, the ingredients aren't there. It's just how you mix them together to, to form the right combination to, to get the best product on the ice. Yeah, yeah, it's obviously world-class players, but how are they going to play together? And, and they took the proper amount of time to figure that out and do it right. Pretty dream situation here for Team Botcher. There's Shot Rock with a couple of corner guards. Team Clyblink's in a bit of trouble, so it's either go all in here or try to bail. What do you think, Jay? I'd be... Looking at that short run back there on the the just off center guard zone, if they can get yeah, okay. cl as close as they can to like just off nose and just plant the yellow onto the other yellow, no. I think that might be optimal. It's a risky play though, because if you miss, you didn't really gain anything. It does seem to be curling more too. Yeah. I, I like the weight choice here because then they have a chance to leave their shooter in an optimal spot for them, closer to the center line. So if it's made, they, they should be shot rock and buried under a stagger. You could hear Evan say you might be able to miss this low and, and if you just tick the center guard, at least that rock's exposed and accessible in the eight foot. Oftentimes in the middle positions, it's, it's you know, there, there might be a miss here or there. It's how you miss. And if, if you miss the right way, you still get something out of the shot. This one's just over the top. So a bit of a tough way to miss that one. The, their frozen stone's still in a good position, but the stagger that was there is no longer... So as expected, the pressure will firmly be put on here by Team Botcher. Where's the best place to draw, though? That's the question. There's no wrong answer. I'm sure Brandon will let us know. <laughs> yeah, I think that might be the best place. That that rock that uh, is frozen to the top eight stone, like it, it is, it is in a good place for Team Clybrink, but they can't really get at it. So. If Brendan can hide one behind the corner guard now, both rocks are going to be tough to get out. It, it's kind of a situation where where's your best result and the easiest way to get it? And this seems to be it. And that's a perfectly matted stone there by the front end of Ben Hebert and Brett Gallant. Might have tucked out a little bit, but it's going to be very tough for, for Kyler Clybring to get in there and get shot rock. Well, yeah, and it looks like that was still second shot, so excellent management of the stone there.
Looks like Kyler's just going to try to follow Mark down and just draw to the face of that stone in the edge of the eight foot. I think this call's made to not give up a huge end. Uh, it's sort of like a conceding two type of play, but if he doesn't do this, it, it could lead to a really big end. So a bit of a defensive call in, in a, the form of a freeze. Kyler calling for lead Tyler Van Amsterdam right out of the hand, thinking it's a little bit tight. Tight and light. And as that one comes up short of the rings, it does leave a, a potential run back opportunity for Clybrink, but Team Botcher is sitting two in the house and drawing. Yes, trouble brewing for Clybrink. Yeah, and for Team Botcher, they just they just saw this shot come down the ice. They know exactly where to put the broom. They know how to make this, and it's going to leave decision time for Clean, Team Clybrink to try to potentially come around the middle to take everything away. So th this is a, a setup call to get a huge end. Yeah, and I think either way you look at this, if... Brennan puts this one in the right place. There isn't really a draw path for, Cly for Kyler to get in there. Brennan Botcher with his first rock in the second end. Sweeper's not wanting to go. Gets through the port. Oh, and right to the face of that red rock. Just perfect execution there from Brennan Botcher and his squad. So Jeff, it, it sounds like they're just discussing the drag effect and how this collection of corner guards will come into the house if they were to throw a high hard one. So I think their mindset is limit the damage right now. They're, they're trying to make some reds go away. Because I think you mentioned the draw path is really tough to get behind everything. It's The corner guards are potentially in the way. So... Yes, with the amount of curl in this ice, we were seeing anywhere between five and six feet of curl at times. So that drop path, those corner guards are right in the way. There is no drop path. So Kyler hasn't even explored a draw. It's a little scary addressing the one in the middle, and, and Kyler just mentioned it. If he ever missed it, it, it they are just going to do that and get three. And, and if he makes contact, he'd potentially leave the yellow stones unguarded in the house. So you have to be really careful with that. Right now, that yellow stone's saving him from four, potentially five right now. At the point, though, like it might not even save them from four if, if this run back isn't made on the on the right side. When you look at the prompter here, uh, Team Clybrink has called a timeout. This is a good opportunity for us to introduce their coach that they brought to this event. Uh, multiple time Scotty's champion as she makes her way down the ice. I'm sure she'll come into view soon and you'll see the newest addition for Team Clybrink. Not a bad pickup. And there you see it. There we have Chelsea Carey here coaching Team Clybrink. We'll see if they let her talk. If they were smart, they would.
So they're discussing the options potentially to play a split so that the yellow taps up and out counts maybe one or two of those red runs on the side and rolls in so that they sit two and three. Don't, don't know if that would necessarily be there. And, and it's tough. If you ever left it anywhere that is a potential double, you threw it a little hard, there's risk, but not to say that there's not risk in running these this, this corner guard combination back. And it seems they're struggling a bit with where that's actually going to go based on drag and the angle of those two stones. I like to think, Jeff, with the amount of separation that, that there currently is, like it's it's almost in that zone where it doesn't matter where you hit it, it's going to go into the same place. So the way they see it, it's lined up to go onto the right side of that red rock. So you'll likely have a jam roll out and Brendan will have an open draw for three. So they're trying something else. Yeah, soft weight, chip off that those two guard or two rocks that are frozen behind the corners and hopefully roll to a spot that's buried somewhere in the back four. So it's lots of, with lots of discussion, here's Kyler's last rock here in the second end. The rock's really curling off the center line. Needs to get by the guard. And they get by. And a pretty great result there from Clybrink. It's a great shot. It's fantastic. He he did what he wanted to do by out, out counting all of the other things in the big end. Well done. All of the discussion there was well worth it. That, that rock sits right in the corner, so Brandon's going to have a, a very hard time getting rid of it and sitting for third, third shot. He's going to have a hard time to score two. Yeah, he, he'd likely have the outturn draw through the port to the side eight foot for two. If, if he can make that, if, if the hole's big enough, depending on the curl. Yeah, likely to have to chip off the side of the, yeah. the 12 foot rock. He's lining up the run back. Which could be for three. It'd be tough. Tough to stick it for three. Just the amount of curl in the ice makes this far more difficult than it would seem. Based on first glance, you'd think, well, why don't they just draw through the hole? It's it's just with the curl in the ice, it's not there. It's a good problem to have with the amount of curl. You usually can make every shot. However, in this case, I guess you can't. The the Looks like the run back is the call, Jeff. Yeah, and it looks like they're just playing it for two because I don't see a way they can stick the the rock they're running in, in a spot that scores three. All right, so we have Brendan Botcher, last shot in the second end, a double run back attempt here for potentially three, likely two points. And makes no mistake, a great shot for two points there. Team Botcher gets their deuce. Could have been more, just two points as Bodger takes a 2-0 to zero lead into the third end. So you're a pizza person, but you're married to a wing person, and your kids are salad people? You can't pick your fam, but with over 50 menu items to choose from, you can make them all happy. Order today and enjoy Boston pizza at home. Calling all curlers, novice to pro. Ashram Curling Supplies patented rotator disc system lets you customize your slider right in the store. Velcro attachments make it easy to find the sliding platform that's right for you. Shop Ashram Curling Supplies, 700 McPhillips, online at ashram.com. I missed a shot. I made the wrong call. I didn't sweep hard enough. We let you down. At least, that's what they say, like they want us to quit. But that's not who we are. That's not what champions do. 
Champions fight back. Champions rise again. Champions are resilient. And make no mistake, we are champions. Goldline, the choice of champions. We're back here, third end of the 2023 Boston Pizza Cup here in Enoch, Alberta at the River Cree Casino. Team Botcher just uh, scored a, a score of two points in the second end. Team Clybrink throwing the Yellow Rocks will carry the hammer into the third. So the end of that last end was actually an end that both teams are going to be happy with in the end. Team Clybrink's happy to only give up two, and, and if you're Team Botcher, Anytime you can get a two, you're happy. So they were probably hoping for more, but they'll take their take their two and be happy. But if you're Team Clybrink, that was a almost an early game saver from the skipper. Absolutely, and as we can see, as we'll see lots throughout this competition, there'll be times in a in an end or throughout a game where the skip just needs to make one, and uh, Kyler Clybrink absolutely needed to make that one, and he made no mistake there. Pretty fortunate where that rock ended up and, and, and ended up in a, a pretty great spot uh, just to only give Brendan a chance to score two. And like you said, he'll be pretty happy with that result. So as Mark Kennedy knifes that rock in to try to promote the curl for Ben Hebert's rock, it ends up somewhere in the back of the forefoot. A little deeper than he expected. Game on now. Yeah, it definitely gives Team Clybrink a chance to come around that stagger and lock one in there. So Jay, is the play here to come right to this or would you want to be top four, top button, dead buried? I think ideally you want to, without the hammer, if you if you didn't have the hammer, you'd come right down to it. But since you do, I think above the tee line is better. Yeah, As I, you can I, see this one slipping a little deep. I agree. That, that's not going to hurt him a ton, although it does leave the pinhole open for Brett to freeze one on top. But yeah, I think that's a good point. If you didn't have the hammer you'd want to come right down to neutralize that stone. But since you do, you're in the offensive position, you want to make that one good in the top button, top four. Top four, T line. Top button, guys, line's good. T line. Whoa. Line's good. T line. Freeze it. Get around. T line, top four. Line's close. If this one's coming in, they're going to want this one to come right down to the face. Try to sit shot stone. And they didn't, but they did sit right on top of that yellow rock. Pretty great result. Yeah, I think that's mission accomplished. They've shrunk the scoring zone to a very small area of space for Team Clybring to score. So it's open up the middle. Let's make things a little more simple if you're Team Clybring. Evan asking Kyler if they can great, leave two corner guards just so that they have a chance yeah. to generate some offense. Kyler doesn't see it. They're going to try to just hit and roll over to the wings to, to guard the corner. Yeah, I think objective one there was clearing up the middle and, and smart response by the skipper, Kyler, there. Make sure you achieve what you need to achieve in the shot, and then rolling to the corner was almost just a bonus, but Evan made it so good that there it is, and it's forcing Team Botcher to now come up and deal with it. I guess, yeah, Team Botcher has a couple of options here. They could just throw another center guard up and say oh, try again, curl. Kyler, but curl, I think curl. they're happy with less guards in play, less rocks, and just to carry the lead forward. Sorry, yeah, absolutely. You're right. They they could have gone on the offense again there, definitely. I guess the play is pretty good, hey? Just tap this a hair. Just T line. Be fast. Interesting yeah. to, to hear Kyler see. I think the blank's pretty good. And then call the draw shot. 
So uh, I think he's seeing a few shots ahead, knowing that that's exactly what Brendan's going to do is let's let's blow this stuff up. But Kyler's thinking, well, maybe we can put these rocks in a good place where it's not super easy to do that. Yeah, in an 8-N game, they might not think the blank is very good right now, but they know it's 10-N game and they have some time. So it shows some maturity in the patience. Chris, hard, Chris. Hard. Clean, well clean, well clean. Good. I think they're getting blown. everything's blown up either way. Yeah. So the angle's just a little on the wrong side for Clyde Rink. Just both of those yellow rocks you can whack likely going for sure, and there's a the potential here. that all those red rocks stay. Yeah. They would have liked to be a little bit across the nose, closer to the center line there. We, we might see all of them fly here, depending on how those back two line up. It was an out. Because that red should actually drag to our right as we look at it. And we might lose all the stones in the house. Yes, very possible. We'll see how hard Mark throws this one. Whoa. Clean. Yep. Whoa. 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 Very good. Very good. Oh, and a pretty juicy result there for Team Botcher. Spreading those rocks out. I think the force is firmly on until Kyler Clybring can find a way to make a double. Yeah, I'd say great result there. Well thrown. They knew that the yellows were going to fly. It's just where do you leave those reds? And I wasn't sure the back one would be untouched, and it was, so ideal there for Team Botcher. Like the same as I had that. I think it can be close. The other Kennedy here, Chris Where Kennedy, third for Team Clybrink, delivering this stone. Oh, too much room. Too much room. A matchup of two Kennedys. I believe not related. Not related whatsoever. Take a look. Just through perfect. curling, right? Hard. Hard, guys. Trying to get this rock all the way to the face of this back eight stone. Nice. Van Amsterdam brothers like it, put it right on top. Slight separation, but the line was great. How careful do you think Brendan's going to be to avoid this back one? Probably not really that careful, but if they have a foot of separation there, that's plenty of room for, for Mark just to chip this one away. And if it does get a little tight and they all go, it won't break anyone on Team Botcher's heart. Like you said, they're going to give it a go and try to sweep this one straight. Unfortunately, they do catch the back. And we're trending towards blank territory. Yeah, objective A was to make the enemy stone disappear, and that's achieved. Pretty smart call by Kyler Clybrink to play the freeze on that one to set that up. He knew he was forced, and he knew he had to do something. There was no double. The hit and roll may not yield the blank the way that he thought, so play the freeze, get the blast, and now it's looking like a blank. Okay. It's just very well executed there from Chris Kennedy, making yeah. that freeze. It's not easy just to, to throw a cold freeze to a stone when you don't have you know, a guard lined up for you, or you know, having a basically that shot lined up, and you know, just having to draw a stone, not really knowing the line. Very well executed, did the job. Now it's going to be basically all on Kyler just to execute the blank attempt. Trying to nose this rock. Down. 
as this rock is coming down into the house. I'll give you a score update on sheet A. Team Sturme is up 2-1 to one going into the fourth end as they carry the hammer. Team Conchi was forced to 1 in the third. So the Rock's traveling down the ice here. They're just going to try to move the Rock around a little bit to give Kyler some place different to throw his blank attempt. But it needs to hang on. And it doesn't. Easy, easiest blank attempt in the world right here. Might as well learn something from it, though. Definitely, yeah. This is just a good opportunity for Kyler to throw in a path that he might not know or uh, might not have played in his last game. He said he wants to play a shot that'll be as if it's a run back on the center line. Interesting comment for sure. Last stone, third end, just a simple throw through the house as Team Clybrink attempts to take the hammer to the fourth. Easy shot he's ever had, like you said. Uh, Team Clybrink now takes the hammer down two to zero versus Botcher heading into the fourth. So you're a pizza person, but you're married to a wing person, and your kids are salad people? You can't pick your fam, but with over 50 menu items to choose from, you can make them all happy. Order today and enjoy Boston pizza at home. Calling all curlers, novice to pro. Ashen Curling Supplies patented rotator disc system lets you customize your slider right in the store. Velcro attachments make it easy to find the sliding platform that's right for you. Shop Ashen Curling Supplies, 700 McPhillips, online at ashen.com. And we're back here, end number four action of the 2023 Boston Pizza Cup, draw two, featuring Team Clybrink versus Team Botcher. Team Botcher with a two to nothing lead here in the fourth. Team Clybrink has the hammer. A little tight. Copy. Copy. And uh, as we get into the fourth, I'd like to give a special shout out to our title sponsor, Boston Pizza. For more than 50 years, Boston Pizza has had a proud history of participating and giving back to the communities in which we live and operate our restaurants. Uh, Boston Pizza understands the value of being involved in the community and is honored to be involved and support the community where it needs the most. They know the strength that is required from the community here in Enoch to host events such as the Alberta Boston Pizza Cup and thanks the host community and fans for having the same passion for curling that they do. Be sure to stop in at your local Boston Pizza to enjoy the specials they have on now, such as everyday specials, winter feature sheet, and pretty soon the Valentine's Day special, the heart-shaped pizza, I think that's their 30th year they've done that. So stop in to a Boston pizza today. Jay, me and you could use a heart-shaped pizza up here right now. Oh, those are lined up. 
Bobby Rapper. I also want to take some time to just mention Curling Alberta's 50-50. We have daily draws happening starting yesterday, February 7th, all the way until Sunday. Draws are open daily at 9 a.m. and close daily at 10 p.m. So you can purchase 50-50 tickets online, curlingalberta.ca slash raffle to find the link. Or you can purchase tickets in venue, which helps the Avenir Curling Club as well as Curling Alberta, who invest in grassroots curling across the province. Buy now for your chance to win. So Jeff, the first four ends of action have seen Team Botcher come out to an early lead. However, I think it's safe to say it could have been a lot worse here for Team Clybrink. Yeah, without question. We we saw that second end shaping up like a bonanza for Team Botcher, but Kyler's last one stayed in a good spot that limited the damage, and Brendan had to make a really good one for his two in, in that second end. And Control. And then the third end, we, we saw Chris Kennedy set up a good blank with a freeze after Mark Kennedy made a really good double. So that led to a blank, and here we are in the fourth with looks like we're going to have some action. It's nice to see these ends are setting up early with some offense, and it only does take a couple of really good big weight shots to end that, but at least they're trying. Absolutely, yeah. And as, as you, you know, as we... we said in the preview like team Clybrink has played team botcher tight all season and it's really nice to see these young teams hanging in there making those big shots and clutch moments and and really kind of taking it to team botcher however in this uh in this game it seems like the big strats are just just giving team Clybrink a chance to hang around not necessarily i guess provide them the offense as you can see on the scoreboard but we'll see if that uh, changes throughout the game So Team Botcher's in a great spot so far in this end. A little bit of a misstep there from Evan led to uh, an opportunity for Brett Gallant here to put another one on top of those two shot stones that are sitting just in the forefoot. Your line's good. I think the weight's Line's good. Line's good. Line's good. Line's good. Line's snug. Little tight. Whoa, 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 whoa. Keep going. Uh, yep, yep, yep. Hard mark, hard. Right to it, right to it. Uh. Keep it high, keep it high. That'll play. That'll play. That works. Slight over curl on the guard attempt there by Brett Gallant. Yeah, it's going to give... It's going to give Evan a chance just to tap this rock back and set up an angle to potentially use later. I think Kyler's attempting to use those two rocks in the forefoot rather than take them right out. He can't really see enough to hit them out and, and stay in the rings. So, And it actually probably benefits him more to leave them around. He can use those as something that's in the way. If he can get his yellow stone on top of them, it'll make it really hard to remove. Absolutely, and with the hitting ability of Mark Kennedy and, and Brett Gallant, you need to make sure you leave some of the, the rocks as backing just so they can't just blast everything out. With a two-point lead, you know that's what Brendan wants to do is hit rocks. And uh, as we've seen in the past, if they can get themselves into blank territory, they have. Just with perfect execution. That's a great shot there from Evan Van Amsterdam. Yeah, it, it leaves Team Botcher sitting too, but it, that Yellowstone's in a really dangerous spot. And it can be promoted later. It, it's very, very difficult yep. to remove. We are going to see Team Botcher go on the offense again, throw up the guard, but yep. if Team Clybrink has a way in later, they have a pretty routine two-foot raise there. Great shot. Yeah, and as we've seen in the past, Kyler Clybrink isn't scared of a shot out there. Like, there's nothing that he won't want to throw and won't think that he can make, and that's what you need out of a skip. So we might see him throwing a, a high hard one from the wings later to to promote into a potential for a big end. It's more of a setup shot there from Evan. Yeah, absolutely. Short of that. And that's basically in the perfect spot there for Mark Kennedy. Does leave a port uh, that Kyler is discussing playing back eight weight just to chisel that rock back and sit on the button. 
Okay. Yeah, guard that high sometimes doesn't guard anything with this amount of curl in the ice. It's in the way, definitely, but if the right weight's thrown, they can access that rock at the back of the butt. The front end wants them to play the tap on the completely overburied, fully open on the other side, yellow rock. Like it's overburied by more than a rock. That would be quite the shot. It, the players usually know what's there, so I trust their their judgment. Scary to look at from the hack, though, I bet. Yes, it looks like they're going after shot stone here. Just tapping it back. Straight. Maybe hard. they know something we don't about Chris's Close intern. Well, we might know too. <laughs> Try to go! Keep going! He needs to really get on this to get by the guard. They get by. And just chisels that top Yellowstone. With, an, with a little less weight, they might have actually had the tap. Yeah, he, he touched the rock that we thought he couldn't get to. It, it was very close to that top guard and, and warping. So Sorry, not the best result for them because it does leave an opportunity for Team Botcher, as Brendan's indicating right now, to come sit fully buried and, and sit to which would basically eliminate any chance at a big end for Team Clyburn. That's true. I think the one saving grace there was that that Yellowstone did, did sit for second shot. So at least it's a, a draw to sit two instead of a draw to sit three for Brandon Botcher. But yes, this end is quickly gone from bad to worse here for Team Clyburn. It's one thing when you're playing it when you're playing a team that's ranked top five in the world. When when you miss, they're likely to make afterwards, and if they do, it's it, it goes from bad to worse to straight ugly really quickly. So it'd be nice to see if uh, you know Team Clyburn can come and generate some offense with some of these rocks. But I think they're gonna be hard pressed to score at this point. Great shot. I think the key on this one is to actually sit shot if you're if your team Clybring. They have to move that okay. that's team botcher stone off the button and if they can cross the face of it that's even better and, and move it back enough to be shot because just freezing to it would would basically force them so they could make some space for themselves if a good one's made here it's good whoa back line whoa back line whoa. Whoa. Close tie. Close tie. hard whoa oh. yep back line whoa evan hard of hard of whoa clean whoa tie 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 Shot. That's great from Chris Kennedy. Like you said, got shot stone. The whole first to make the top second. Yeah, that's a really good shot. If he were just to freeze it, the shot stone would still be shrinking that scoring zone. So the fact that he moved that out of the forefoot made that, although tiny scoring zone, a little bigger. You'll see Brendan try to attempt the exact same shot that Chris just threw. Top, back, back They're making this port close. look like it's a mile wide by the amount of, of times they've gone through it this end. Yeah, like you said, if he just throws that tap back weight, he should be able to get right to the nose of that stone. Just a pleasure to watch some of the shots that are able to be made here on Matt Yo's ice here in at the River Cree Resort and Casino. Back line! Just through! And once again, through the port. Breckeland trying to curl this rock. Hard in the yellow, hard in the yellow. 
and so. taps it back to sit two points. Yeah, another another great shot. Followed a great shot from Chris Kennedy there, and that's that's really important that they sat two there. And it really limits the places that Team Clybrink can place this next stone. It's the only way to get to button. And do you save that though? Like they're not gonna play it, are they? What do I do with my rock? I don't know. If you to run now, you open up that rock. Yeah, Kyler has a point there. Evan said, hey, maybe we can save this rock, but or save that in-off possibility on the right, but if they don't play it, Jeff, like to answer his question, what can they play? I think their sole focus right now is scoring one in this end somehow. So it, even if that's opening something up at this point to make their life a little easier on his last, that's, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, I agree. If they find a way to clear a couple of those guards out of the forefoot, at least they have a chance to even draw down to that rock in the back four or, or still play that in off later. Team Botch is going to have to throw a guard if they clear the guards. Yeah, and the problem right now is they don't have the draw path with, yeah. with this is, Kyler's in turn. So that path. corner guard on the left side of the screen as we look at it is, is a problem stone. If that wasn't there, he'd have a simple draw to the button for his one. I don't hate it. I think they're discussing through the port with the out turn, playing the hit and roll. No, nope, they're playing the, the straight run back. Like you said, let's eliminate that essentially guard at the draw path and try to accomplish two birds, or you know, squash two birds with one stone, try to run that rock into the pile. Might get fortunate. Yeah, I like this call. It's it's going to yield a positive result for them. And, and like you said, they could get fortunate. The rocks could fly in such a way where they could be left shot rock or leaving Team Botcher not, the opportunity to not throw a guard. Kylie's wasting no time in the hack. Loves his run back. So let's see if he can make this one. And he gets uh, the, the guard out of the way, but unfortunately doesn't make contact with anything in the house. Team Botcher still lying two points. Make the double, if we could ever make the double and get to there, you know? So decision time for Team Botcher. Do they want to sit three at this point and make them draw the button against three stones? Or do they want to take away that draw path? Whatever they do, they're looking for a steal yeah, here because they're in great shape. Throw on top 12. He, what he gives them the best draw. opportunity to do so that? If we make, we'll make them draw against four. Sure. Well, the, you, yeah, I, I like that. Okay. That or block a draw and make him. Still need to it. Yeah. He's yeah. got kind of a pile of margin off this one too. I think right now with the curl, the draw is not. A bonanza. Yeah, I like that. So, yeah, Botcher obviously right sitting two it. rocks, sitting two points right now. He has two, the choice to two third, guard the draw path, either a, oh, making ah, Kyler likely play the hit off his own. in off the side the for one the point. Four and or they can remove the rock in the back four, roll in, okay and force Kyler to draw against three. Half rock. Well, he might be trying to play the double here, too, to sit, I think it's four afterwards, and then it would be a cold draw to the draw button against button. four, which is maybe a little more nerve-wracking, but it does leave the pin open for him. Come on, Mark, get over there, get over there. Oh, yeah. So perfectly executed, yeah. executed double takeout, yeah, and like you said, sits four Great stones job, and yeah. leaves nothing for Kyler Clyburn to draw up to on this draw attempt. Yeah, I think He's so. got the whole button. I think he might be okay with this, actually. He knows he has a shot to score, and earlier in the end, he didn't. So. Yeah, this is one of those moments, just like in the second so, yeah. end, he needs to make this one to keep this game going. You gotta be touch white of the button. Let's do it. Control. Hey, hey. Hey. It's a little tight early. Tyler Clybrink. Last stone draw here for one in the fourth. Gotta go, 
Line's good for Team. calling five. Start. That's about top of the eight foot. They need to get Start this time. one to the T line. Got a push, guys. And the sweepers have given up on it. It will be a steal of four for four. Team Botcher. So they take a commanding six to nothing lead heading into the fifth. Hell it's, late. it's all good. No worries. What splits are you guys getting? Because that felt really good. Anyone can be scared to try something new. But moving outside of your comfort zone can open new possibilities. And having the courage to change something doesn't change who you are. So why try something new? To innovate. To create a legacy. To make an impact. You have to earn it. And you better be ready to enjoy it. Because you never know who else you might make an impact on. What impact will you make? Goldline, the choice of champions. Play Curling Alberta's 50-50. Support grassroots curling and win big with daily draws and the Briar Final Mega Jackpot now over $100,000 and growing. Please play responsibly. Welcome back to the 2023 Boston Pizza Cup here in Enoch, Alberta, the River Creek Resort and Casino. I'm Jason Ginter alongside Jeff Hoffer here in the booth. We have Team Botcher with a big steal of four points in the fourth end uh, as Team Clybrook is still looking to get onto the scoreboard. Team Botcher is leading six to zero now in the fifth. We can do double points. Jeff, it's, it's seeming like Team Botcher, even though they didn't start as early as Team Clybrook did today to get onto the ice conditions, they have come to play tonight. Where do you call yeah, it's, it's what you expect from a Team Botcher. They... They have yeah. momentum coming into this game from their last event and, and this this event actually, not just this game. And they made a calculated decision in the last end. They they had a choice to draw block the draw path and make the draw harder and have Kyler throw some type of circus shot. Which if you know anything about Kyler Clybrink, he's likely to make those circus shots. He does it a lot. So I think they made the calculated decision to sit the four stones, give him the button, leave him the draw, and the gamble paid off in that end. As just a little light out of his hand, and the guys couldn't get it there. Very good shot. Yeah, now with a, a six-point lead, Team Botcher will be throwing as many rocks as they can into the house, and then as soon as they can, they're going to look to bail. Team Clybrink will obviously do the opposite. They want to throw as many rocks in the free guard zone, making sure Team Botcher can't use them or uh, remove them from play and try to generate some resemblance of offense here as this uh, game gets into the fifth. Yeah, you, you know you're in tough, so you just got to try to do whatever you can to create some chaos on the sheet. Hard line tight. One, two. Hard line. Uh, curl. It's like just do it. Curl it. As we do a score update uh, throughout the, the draw number two action, we have 12 seed Parker Conchu playing against 4 seed Carson Sturme. Carson Sturme was forced to 1 in the 4th, so they have taken a 3 to 1 lead into the 5th. We have 7 seed Team Vavrik versus 2 seed Team Kui. Team Vavrik was able to score 2 points in the 3rd to take a 2 to 1 lead over Team Kui. We have 6 seed Team Jigs versus 3 seed Aaron Slachinski. Aaron Slachinski was forced to 1 to take a 2 point lead 4 to 2 into the 5th. Line's good. Go ahead. Go ahead. Line's good. Line's great. Line's good. Line's good. Okay. Yeah, you have a little Line's good. T line. Line's good. T line. Yep. 
Keep yep. it moving. Right line, so as guys. you mentioned, Jay, this this yep. rock standing yeah, up in the house as well. Whereas yep, 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 both yep, of those yep, redstones yep, are touching yep, the center yep, line. You'd five. see if the lead wasn't six nothing that maybe a guard would go up here, but the play is much more advantageous to Team Botcher in the house. So they're just going to put it over there in the open side and. You know the peels are coming on the next stones. Yeah, and then Kyler knows it too. <laughs> and with those rocks being frozen shot, together, right? those will be very easily oh, removed line. with the double peel. Okay. If he throws anything behind those stones, that, tr that rock's just going to shoot right into it as well. So he's trying to be creative here, like, trying to find the best way to spread out these corner guards. Well, that's a clever call. You, you might as well move them around and whoa, hope your whoa, whoa, shooter whoa. ends up somewhere closer to the uh, center line. Even guarding those reds is a good spot for you right now. Okay. Unfortunately, that was just too much weight as it just wicks off that corner guard and rolls out of play. It's still likely better than it was, but barely. Yeah, it's, it's tough because that's not a shot Evan will likely ever play. Uh, you know, having to throw a rock with potentially hack weight just to try to spread it out over on the side of the 12 foot. Might be a mixed doubles play for his partner, Paige Papley, but I don't think he would have played that shot before. So, tough times mean tough shots. That's right. Yep, yep, yep. Clean. And the conservative play there by Team Botcher, conservative peel. They they could have attempted the double peel and get rid of everything, but they just chose to take the one off, the better of the two guards, just to make sure that they're not creating any unneeded offense for their opposition. Four. Line's good. Curl, five, curl, five, hard curl. As we continue this fifth end of play, uh, I just want to give a shout out to another Curling Alberta sponsor, Original 16. So if you notice behind the sheet, behind one of the scoreboards, uh, we, we have a, an on-ice lounge here in River Cree Resort and Casino. Uh, if you're here in the, in the curling arena, You'll be able to watch the action live in the standing area. There are also a few seats there on ice level at the Original 16 on ice lounge. Original 16 is the official beer of Curling Alberta and local ice lounge sponsor. And uh, I think Jeff and I would be happy to have anyone in attendance come up to the booth and provide us with one of their products. It's a good tasting beer. All right, so we have Team Clybring trying to figure out how to generate yeah, like some offense with their one go. corner guard. They're trying to use as many of these Team yeah, Botcher like rocks as they can as well. Control. Control. Well, and they know the sooner yeah. they bring the play into the house, the more the doubles are going to be played, and, and the sooner all of those rocks are going to disappear. So I, I, I think they're done trying to delay that and putting up the guards. So we'll see an attempt here for a hit and roll to get this one hidden behind the Tyler, top two stones. It's good, control! Hard tie. Hard, right up. Hard tie. Gotta go. Uh, we got hole. We got hole. And an unforced error there from Chris well, Kennedy. The guard, the guard Gives room. Brennan Botch an opportunity just to clear this corner guard out of play. Jeff, would you ever consider just tossing up a guard on these rocks in the center line? Yeah. It's maybe you late enough to the end to do good. that. It's no. third stack in stone. You could no, go on the offense here, but I think a 6 nothing lead. So, so maybe that's... The, the peeling the guard isn't a bad call. It's just kind of how, how much offense does Dean Botcher need to get right now. Yes, the smart call, just looking at the scoreboard, would likely be to remove the, the corner guard and just try to take as many blank ends as you can into the, the bottom half of this game. I think it, for Brennan, it's just how quickly does he want to go to the original 16 on ice lounge. Well, and there's something to be said about that. If, if they shake your hands, the game's over and you win. So if they have a chance to maybe accomplish that, 
you might see them go for it. For sure, yeah. And I mean, there's no way for Team Clybring to come back if they yeah. steal three or four here, or even one. Uh, you know, if Team Botcher really blanks cool the, the end, it gives Team Clybring a chance to take Hammer to the next end and potentially generate uh, a two or a three score and keep the game alive. This is, however, the only way that Team Clyburn can get any offense going is is with this decision from Team Botcher. For sure. Bit of a gamble, but it's yeah. calculated. Just like we we like here uh, at the River Cree Casino, you know, it's all about calculating those risks and knowing when to hold them and when to fold them. I wouldn't call this an all-in call, but they're not folding. That's not bad. That's not bad. Same shot. It's not ideal. It leaves a stagger at the top. Yes, definitely not what Team Botcher wanted there, leaving that stagger. It's essentially a large guard now for Team Clybring to go around. So the risk didn't pay off, at least Whoa. so far. Whoa. But there's still time. Evan. On top of that, they've left the corner guard for Team Clybring okay. to potentially use later. And I think the depth of that corner guard went into the decision as well. It's it's probably not going to guard anything with the amount of curl in the ice. It's it's quite high, and to bury a stone behind that any, anywhere in the house, you'd be able to access it. So it might have just been a wasted rock to peel it. But I don't know if they would have walked that Mark's last one down into that spot with the stagger. I think that's the that's the throw. I agree. Having said that, if they're able to play a hit and roll now behind the the stagger it's an advantage to them yeah yeah without question they yeah i thought it was soft i didn't think it was soft. the chris kennedy stone needed to be buried there and unfortunately a little wide and it's accessible yeah it's tough you know I, team clybrink has been chasing throughout the game and team botcher seems to be one shot ahead of team clybrink throughout most of the ends but team clybrink has been making their fair their their, their fair share of their shots and it seems like the, the steal of four have really just taken the wind out of their sails a little bit. Uh, the fifth end break would be a great time for them to really reset, have their new coach help them, you know, just generate a little bit of energy and, and have a strong second half. For now, they, they'll need Kyler to pick up the pieces. So not a lot of harm done by that rolling out. I, I think that's probably better than not rolling far enough to bury it and giving giving Kyler something to use to come off of. It, he doesn't have a lot to draw to with the intern and with that yellow corner guard that's in the way of the outturn draw. You know, interesting with the amount of curl they have in the ice, if they were to skinny by the outside of that corner guard, hypothetically, knowing the ice conditions and everything, do you think they could bury behind those two stagger? I would certainly love to see him try. I think that'd be a cool shot to throw. Unfortunately, we won't get to see it. He's playing the double and trying to roll behind the corner. So he made the roll, but I think he rolled the other way from what he was calling, and now he, he's leaving a Team Botcher stone dead buried with a yellow stone covering it. Thick, huh? The safe play here is called. Just get rid of the yellow, and you have the force. You have a 6 nothing lead. You could, however, just put another one on top of your red and really put the pressure yep. on, but... Not electing to do that. Yeah, Brendan Botcher, he, he knows the chances of victory right now if he just gives them one point here, and I think that's his, his goal number one for this end. Play the simple shot, remove the rock. And no mistake. Uh, yeah, pretty similar right there. Okay. Forcing Kyler to play a controlled weight takeout, just removing this stone off the button and leaving his own sitting in the forefoot for one. Control. 
getting a point might help Team Clybrink regroup at the fifth end break as well. Stop the bleeding. Clean! Tyler! Tyler! Yeah, go Tyler. Yeah. Kyler calling lead Tyler to Whoa. curl this rock. Keep, keep, keep going. You're good, you're good. As long as the weight's good, it looks like it will sit in the forefoot. Team Clybring scoring the single. Still down five as it is six to one for Team Botcher as we head into the fifth end break. Play Curling Alberta's 50-50. Support grassroots curling and win big with daily draws and the Briar Final Mega Jackpot now over $100,000 and growing. Please play responsibly.
I missed a shot. I made the wrong call. I didn't sweep hard enough. We let you down. At least that's what they say, like they want us to quit. But that's not who we are. That's not what champions do. Champions fight back. Champions rise again. Champions are resilient. And make no mistake, we are champions. Gold line, the choice of champions. Calling all curlers, novice to pro. Ashram Curling Supplies patented rotator disc system lets you customize your slider right in the store. Velcro attachments make it easy to find the sliding platform that's right for you. Shop Ashram Curling Supplies, 700 McPhillips, online at ashram.com. Welcome back to Enoch, Alberta. We have the 2023 Alberta Boston Pizza Cup action. Draw number two, Team Botcher against Team Clybrink here on Sheet B. Team Botcher has controlled the first half of this this game. They they have opened up to a six to one lead over Team Clybrink, and they have the hammer to start the sixth end. Yeah, you'll notice the fourth end is is a pretty glaring point in this game. A four steal. Kyler had the button to draw to and unfortunately was just a little light. Uh, conceding the four stolen points to Brandon Botcher's squad. So big hill to climb here in the second half of this game. And, and we'll see Team Clybring throw everything at them. They, there's no, no downside in taking a ton of risk because the worst thing they do is lose sooner than they would otherwise. So. Yeah, definitely. And it seems like so far this game, it's just been Team Botcher setting up rocks really well early. Team Clybrink attempting to get some sort of offense going and playing some likely some tougher shots because of the, the way the, the rocks are set up. And Team Botcher getting a couple of misses out of Team Clybrink and really capitalizing on them. Yeah, and, and one in particular that was worth okay. four points, unfortunately. And, and Kyler's going to hit the button way more often than he's not. I think he probably makes that shot yeah. nine times out of ten. It just happened to be the one that he missed, and it's worth four points in this game. But having said that, you know, we have Tyler Van Amsterdam being asked to throw two center guards and making them both perfectly on the center line. Forcing Ben Hebert to throw a couple of draws. A great start. Maybe Chelsea Carey had said something to them uh, at the break and revitalized this squad. Well, I think that's it. I think however many ends they end up playing here, and, and if they take this all the way, that's a huge win. Given the hole they're in at the break, it, they're not out of this event by any means. It's a triple knockout. So what they're doing in the second half of this game is going to lead to what they potentially do in, in the next game and the games after that. So it, it's always about learning and moving forward. And, and Chelsea knows that. She's been to so many big competitions that I'm sure her message was exactly what the guys four. needed. Four, five, four. Go then, go then. Lisa Curl. Lisa Curl. Four. Just, just Chris curl it. Just Chris curl it. Good. Nice shot. Good. Yep. Resting right up against that top four stone from Ben Hebert was Evan Van Amsterdam's first rock. Yep. And Brennan Botcher yep. makes, or takes no time to come up to the, the center guard to rip it. As you see, reigning Canadian Olympian, Brett Gallant. And Briar Champion. Not to mention the Briar Champion. <laughs> he will be be at, or he will be uh, back in action with Team Botcher. I think they've secured at least a wild card spot in into the Briar. Yeah, wearing different colors than he's used to for so many years on the Gushu squad, but seems to be fitting in pretty well here on Team Botcher. Yeah, it's always a tough move, you know. You're you're the reigning Briar champion. You've essentially got a free ticket back to the Briar, and you still gave it up to play with uh, a new squad. 
you always see that the the team that wins the briar they're very it's very tough to make any changes and uh you know obviously that was a tough decision there might have been a lot of factors but i think brett landed on his feet here in alberta safe to say yeah i'd, I'd say for sure and and i think the model that that brett's used to and, and enjoys is lots of practice with his team which that's what Team Botcher is capable of, and that's what they've been doing. Their proximity is is yep. good enough that they can practice a lot as a team. And that's what yep, Brett was yep, used yep, to yep, on his yep, previous yep, team, is being with his teammates and practicing a ton. And, that, and that's what Team Botcher has adopted, and it's working. Definitely, yeah. You can see, you know, the, the strides that they've made over the course of the season. You know, they, they started a little slow, but, you know, like you said, they, they were still winning games. But now just the level of dominance that you've seen tonight and throughout their last event, being able to put it together likely wouldn't have happened if they were in a bunch of separate cities and separate provinces and just competing. The the ability to practice together and and get those reps, those those physical reps with their coach present all the time, obviously really helping them. Yeah, and the lack of panic when they didn't just light the world on fire one, and two. win everything. I think they stuck to the process one, knowing one, that guys, it would eventually one. pay okay, off, two, and we're, two, two. we're seeing that now. Yes, that's just the thing. Championships aren't won in, in September. They're, they're won, obviously, here in February and then at the Briar in March, so... Teams don't try to peak in September. They just try to fine-tune all their way until they need to. Well, and there's certainly not one on paper either. Just because there's Olympians all over the place on this team and their resumes are amazing, it'd be hard to find anybody who works harder than these guys, even given those resumes. So it's really neat to see the work pay off. And as the, the rest of the world, you know, catches up and passes the teams in Canada, it's it's nice to see teams, you know, they might be the best in Canada, they might be second best in Canada, they might be top five in Canada, but they're still trying to get better so they can compete with these teams like the Moets and the Adines in the world where all they do is train. Yeah, exactly. Let's! Let's! One! Just over is fine. Just, Just over is fine. Lots of room. Just a one. That's good. good. Sounds nice like spot. we can talk about this all night. Let's get back to our feature game here. Uh, team Clybrink and Team Botcher essentially just throwing throwing up the guards and Team Botcher ripping the guards. As, uh, you know, as Team Botcher is doing the math, if we can just eliminate a stone every time, it's good, good news for us. It's not a bad situation if your team botcher obviously given the score and as long as they don't give up a ton of steals they're okay and team Glybrink's in a pretty good spot to get the force but team botcher's more than happy to take their one point and move on so they're trying to to see what they they could potentially leave here they're playing a combination run back just trying to, to send that red rock flying into the house and take out the other red. Yeah, I'd assume he's trying to roll a little bit towards our left rock. side, closest to Kyler there, to guard the shot in the top four. I don't know, this side Might be the best chance to get shot rock in the moment. Seven with, uh, yeah, as, as it looks right now, that. if they were just to play the wide open run back on the left, it would leave both stones exposed, so. It's a creative way to maybe generate a steal opportunity. Again, asking Tyler to curl the rock. And it just misses contact with that rock in the top of the button. Just didn't curl up enough there for Kyler. So now if you're Brendan, you have the hammer, you're, you're sitting one in the house, but there isn't a whole lot of room to score two. What are your options? 
based on last time? I don't think he wants something unlucky to happen drawing against multiple yellows. Sure. I think he's going to yep. eliminate enemy stones, and he'll try to roll this somewhere over to the open an side one or a pretty easy and hope two. that Kyler addresses the yellow-red combination and leaves him a double for two later. He could just draw over there, but if, like I said, something unlucky happens and he's drawing against a few yellows, a pick or something like that, they want to eliminate all those external variables. Yes, good point. Uh, a rock in the boot rack isn't likely to score. A little big. Whoa. Clean. Clean. Curl. 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 Hard roll, Danny. Hard roll. Hard roll. Oh, 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 oh. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Great job, Bob. If the rock right. overrolled it over to a point where good. Good. looks like Team Clyron can still make a potential double takeout. Yeah, they wanted that to roll a little further, obviously. It did roll far enough that it wasn't guarding the yellow stone. Yeah, that would have caused some grief for Team Botcher, but... We can make this double. If we can make it, and he just knows that for one, right? Did this go? You try to kill this one. No, I think you're trying to go here so he at least is, has some... I think that would just clip this to, to there. Maybe better. If you're playing, kind of, your shooter has to roll dead very And it has to clip this real far. Yeah. Could even look yeah. at something like this, and there that leaves a pretty tough double. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a no, double. And yeah, it's the nose. Step. Open, but, well, not necessarily if it's here. We're here. He's got a hit and roll off this one. Nose with control and hope yeah. it rolls yeah. just yeah. perfect. Yeah. yeah. Like that. Jay, what do you think? I, I like addressing this Yellowstone, and I, and I like the contribution from Evan Van Amsterdam there to hopefully make the little one foot run back and roll the contact rock to the side four foot, and the shooter sit on top that leaves a really hard double. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I, I think they. they that, that's going to be the easier shot of the two Enemy to have control. the best leap. If you can sit two points in the house and, and have them as close as you can to the to the forefoot, it's going to leave Brendan a, a more difficult shot for one. Got to get the roll, though. Just a li little bit of an undercurl again. It's a theme we've noticed on those hits from Kyler. And... Unfortunately, leaves a nose hit for another two points. Yes, this one's a relatively simple shot for two. Definitely not what Kyler was hoping to accomplish there on that last shot. Brandon Botcher, sixth end, last stone, open hit for two. Same way. Heavy, easy. And he makes no mistake. Hits and stays for two points. And that'll be handshakes. Uh, team Botcher, victorious over Team Clybrink. Final score, Team Botcher eight, Team Clybrink one. We will see Team Botcher advancing to the semi-finals in the A event. They will face off against the winner of Sheet A, which is Team Conchu versus Team Sturme. Team Clybrink has fallen down into the B event, where I believe they will play Team Web. Now, if you want to catch action throughout, uh, we'll do a little score update before we sign off here. But uh, if you would like, you can catch all of the games live on Curling Alberta and Curling Stadium's YouTube pages. Uh, you can find them if you just search the team name on the on the, the stream. Currently, we have Team Sturme out in front, four to one over Team Conchu. Uh, after five, potentially just scoring another single, so they are now at five to one after the sixth end. We have Team Kui versus Team Vavrik. They're in a very close matchup in the sixth end. Team Kui is up three to two with Team Vavrik having last rock. 
And then on sheet D, we have Team Slachinski just securing two points in the sixth to go up six to three. And uh, if you want to catch the ends of those games, like I said, hit up Curling Alberta's YouTube page as well as Curling Stadium's YouTube page to find those results. Before we sign off, I'd just like to mention that Curling Alberta is hosting a 50-50 draw. All the proceeds go to the Avenir Curling Club and 50%, I guess, as well, to Curling Alberta's grassroots initiatives. Current 50-50 is jackpot sitting at $3,320. You can buy your tickets either in-house here at the River Cree Resort and Casino, find someone wearing a yellow 50-50 bib, or online at curlingalberta.ca slash raffle. Thank you all for tuning in to draw number two action. I have Jeff Hofford in the booth beside myself, Jason Ginter, signing off. Thank you all and have a great night. So you're a pizza person, but you're married to a wing person, and your kids are salad people? You can't pick your fam, but with over 50 menu items to choose from, you can make them all happy. Order today and enjoy Boston pizza at home. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium.